Honestly, Mr. Boynton, I couldn't believe it when Mrs. Davis told me. Well, it's true, Miss Brooks. At 3 p.m. today, Mr. Conklin is going to jump off the school roof. <laughs> I have a paper right here. The story made quite a splash. So will Mr. Conklin. <laughs> What's it all about? I'll read you some of it. As the highlight of today's civil defense program at Madison High, Principal Osgood Conklin will leap off the roof into a fireman's net. Oh, that's terrible. He might not miss the net. <laughs> I mean, it just goes to prove that he'll do anything to get his name in the papers. Ah, oh, Miss Brooks, you mustn't belittle Mr. Conklin's courage. After all, you wouldn't care to make the leap, would you? Well, just give me a chance to get my trousseau together and I'll... <laughs> oh, you mean off the roof. No, I can think of simpler ways to stunt my growth. <laughs> I guess it was a pretty unfair question to put to a woman at that. When it comes to matters of physical bravery... <coughs> Miss Brooks, did, did you hear something click just then? Yes, I did. This phone has an extension in the dinette, Mr. Boynton. Maybe Mrs. Davis lifted the receiver. That's a dirty lie. <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> Connie, I didn't want Mr. Boynton to know I was eavesdropping. But you don't mind if I listen in, do you? No, but don't invite anybody else. <laughs> it was nothing, Mr. Boynton. Now, what were you saying? Uh, I said that in matters of bravery, it's only natural that men should rate above the weaker sex. Why? That's an insult to womanhood. Don't let him get away with it, Connie. <laughs> well, now, let's not have an argument, Mrs. Davis. It isn't that important. I can't quite understand the point you're trying to make, Mr. Boynton. Uh, it's just that women can't be expected to do the same things men can do. Who says they can't, frog boy? <laughs> <coughs> That's right, dear. Give him both barrels. Are you implying that women are lacking in courage? Well, I didn't exactly say that. I heard it with my own ear. <laughs> Is that you, Mrs. Davis? <laughs> Never mind, Mrs. Davis. Are you hinting that all women are cowards? If that's what you think, say it. All women are lily-livered cowards. <laughs> now, really. Now, let me tell you something, Mr. Boynton. You can't call me a lily-livered coward and get away with it. Not you or anybody else. <laughs> Hello? Hello? What happened? She hung up on you. <laughs> oh, she did. Well, let me tell you something. She'll never hang up on me again. That's what you think. <laughs> he sounds like he has a corner on the bravery market. I just like to call his bluff sometime. Yes, so would I. I bet he wouldn't make that leap for a million dollars. Mm. Frankly, I didn't think Osgood Conklin would have the nerve. Where in the world did he ever get the idea? Well, I imagine it was from the Flying Phelan. A group of us caught their daredevil act at the circus the other night. The flying Phelans. What do they do, dear? Well, after climbing a 50-foot ladder, Mr. Phelan dives into a tank of water covered with flaming oil. Oh. That is, he doesn't exactly dive. Mrs. Phelan pushes him. <laughs> Mrs. Phelan? His wife? Well, who else would want to push a man into a flaming tank? <laughs> it's a very entertaining act, Mrs. Davis. You see, they're both dressed as hobos, as tramps, Oh, excuse me, that must be Walter Denton. Hello, Walter, come in. Read all about it. Our beloved principal's going to hurl himself off the school roof. <laughs> yes, we know. He's diving into a fireman's net. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't it be awful if something happened and the net broke? <laughs> Walter, you mustn't think such things. There isn't the slightest chance of anything happening to that net. Killjoy. Kill <laughs> hey, what do you think made the old buzzard decide to pull a stunt like this? Oh, that's easy, Walter. You know how Mr. Conklin loves publicity. Well, we'd better be getting to school. No, no, it's more than publicity, Miss Brooks. I'm afraid I'll have to go along with Mr. Boynton. Mr. Boynton? Yeah, I called him about 20 minutes ago to break the news about old Marblehead. And Mr. Boynton said that it proved one thing, that in spite of the danger involved, 
even a Mr. Conklin will respond to that noble quality of courage that is inherent in all male animals. <laughs> Only males? What other kind of animals are there? <laughs> Mother, when Daddy leaps off the roof, absolutely nothing can happen to him. Well, not with the protection he's wearing. Now you take it easy and stop worrying. Bye, Mother. <laughs> Bye, Daddy. Mother's awfully worried about you. She just hung up on the phone. I didn't know your mother ever hung up the phone. <laughs> well, there's no cause for concern, Harriet. I don't intend to make that suicidal leap anyway. You don't? When did you decide not to? Five minutes ago when I peeked over the edge of the roof. <laughs> Jumping from heights like that is strictly for the birds. <laughs> oh, well. Sick transit, Gloria Mundi. What does that mean? It means your old man is chicken. <laughs> sending photographers over here this afternoon and there'll be hundreds of people watching. Barring any unforeseen accident, they'll expect you to jump. Nevertheless, I have... Barring any unforeseen accident, you say? Of course. If I were injured beforehand, they couldn't expect me to... Who is it? Miss Brooks. My unforeseen accident. <laughs> One moment, please. You're leaving, Harriet. Well, yes, to my but, inner but Daddy, office, please. You... Hurry on the double. Yes, go, Daddy, go. Bye. Yes, bye. <clears throat> Come in, please. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. My, you look just like Captain Video. <laughs> what? Captain. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's a hot one. <laughs> Captain, yes. Oh, you fracture me. <laughs> please do. Uh, please do sit down. Oh, no, thanks. I can't stay a second. I heard about your contemplated leap off the roof, and I just came in to offer my condolences. Uh, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. I have been preparing for this little feat for some time now. In fact, I have conditioned my body to the point where I am as hard as nails. Uh, let, let me show you. Uh, here, uh, slam this uh, drawer on my hand. Pardon? Uh, oh, I guarantee I'll laugh at the pain. You see, the worst, the worst part about pain is the anticipation of it. So I'll just close my eyes, if you don't mind. Now, go ahead, go ahead. The man who won't be hurt can't be hurt. Slam it. Oh, now, really? That's an order! <laughs> yes, sir. Well, apparently something's stuck in the back of the drawer. It won't close. <laughs> no, for heaven's sake. Well, we'll have to try something else. Uh, oh, I'd better clear off my desk. Would, uh, would you mind holding the typewriter for me? Not at all. Thank you. Uh, I think I'd better oil up the hinges a bit. <clears throat> Well, be careful, Mr. Conklin. That's pretty slippery, and this is very heavy. I'd hate to drop it on your foot. Oh, well, let's just hold that thought, shall we? <laughs> now, where are those reports I want? Mr. Conklin, this is very heavy. Now, just do the best you can, Miss Brooks. You won't mind if I do. I don't want. Let us alone to take a minute. Ah! so clumsy. You've mangled my foot. That typewriter was nowhere near your foot, sir. I dropped it way up there. <laughs> way up there? <laughs> well, the, the crash startled me, so I kicked my desk. <laughs> oh, the foot is definitely broken in several places. <sighs> oh, yes, at least. Yeah. Oh, what a dreadful turn of events. This accident means that I... I won't be able to jump off the roof. Isn't it awful? Well, you must try to be brave, Mr. Conklin. Maybe you could jump on one foot. <laughs> or maybe I could give you a little shove. Well, thanks loads, but this 
unforeseen accident compels me to withdraw. In view of the publicity, however, we must go through with our civil defense program as planned. I'll simply have to dig up a substitute to jump off the roof in my place. A substitute? Hmm, let me see now. How about Mr. Boynton? <laughs> oh, now, really, Mr. Conklin, jumping off a roof is not something that... Mr. Boynton? <laughs> Mr. Male Bravery himself? <laughs> well, I think he'd be just perfect, Mr. Conklin. And if you don't mind, sir, I'd like to break the happy news to him myself. Hop to it, hop to it. <laughs> oh, I do hope Mr. Boynton will consent, Miss Brooks. Do you think he'll jump? Oh, he will, right out of his skin. <laughs> seen such a shameful display of cowardice in action. <laughs> Since word got around that I was seeking a man for the jump, there hasn't been one male teacher available. I'll say there isn't. This corridor is beginning to look like the depot scene from Gone with the Wind. <laughs> for shame. Why, there isn't one whole male left on my entire faculty. Unless, uh, uh, well, how's the wrist, Boynton? Oh, bad. Bad. <laughs> Very bad. Uh, how's the foot, sir? Oh, terrible. Terrible. It's funny, I feel just fine. But then I can afford to. I don't have to leap. <coughs> Correction, Miss Brooks. Huh? Since all the male members of my faculty are indisposed, I have decided that you will make the leap. Me? In the shape I'm in? What shape are you in? I'm a woman. <laughs> true, true. But no one will know the difference because you will be wearing a crash helmet and a paratrooper's outfit with built-in parachute. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, I'm an acrophobiac, sir. I have a morbid fear of high places. Really? You never mentioned that to me, Miss Brooks. Don't be so helpful. <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Conklin. I even get dizzy in high heels. <laughs> and that leap is very dangerous. Not at all. Just be sure you hit the net. <laughs> uh, now then, since you're cooperative enough to make the jump, I cannot, in all fairness, burden you with the additional task of posing for the newspaper photographers. Uh, therefore, after you jump off the roof, I, attired exactly as you are, will walk from around the corner of the building and pose for the pictures. <laughs> That's mighty clever, sir. If you're dressed exactly alike, they'll never be able to tell you two apart. Oh, yes, they will. I'll be the one still standing on the roof. <laughs> now, 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 don't be petulant. I'm quite sure that after you think it over, you'll be delighted to face this exactly Exhilarating experience. <laughs> Good luck and happy landing. <laughs> if you're looking for Mr. Boynton, Walter, he just stepped out a minute so I could get dressed. There are some kids left in my classroom. Yeah, I know. Mr. Boynton just told me all about it. I think it's terrible you're having to make that jump. If I were you, I would flatly refuse to do it. Well, Walter, how can you I... Know, I please, Miss Brooks, don't do it. Look, I've got an idea. Let me break your leg so you'll look like the rest of the faculty. <laughs> That's the sweetest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> but it's too late to back out now, Walter. The old Marblehead must have flipped. What made him start all this jumping business in the first place? Now, you can blame it all on the flying Phelans, that husband and wife team we saw at the circus. If we hadn't gone down there last week, we would have... Hey, wait a minute. Why didn't I think of it before? You could ring in Mr. Phelan as a substitute. Phelan as a substitute? Yeah, I'm sure he'd do it for a price. 
Well, well, look, you could dress him in your outfit and nobody will know the difference. I'll bet you could get him to make that jump for a, for a paltry $25. For a paltry $25, I could get my grandmother to jump. <laughs> well, it's your only chance, Miss Brooks. Haven't you got $25? Well, yes, but I've been saving it up to buy a dress. Well, holy cow, what's more important, not jumping or buying a new dress? You're absolutely right, Walter. If I did make the jump, I probably wouldn't have anything left to put in that dress anyway. <laughs> Up here. Can you tell me where I can find a Miss Brooks, buddy? Yeah, I'm Miss Buddy. Miss Brooks. <laughs> Are you Mr. Phelan? Of the Flying Phelans, right. Look, you said on the phone that you'd explain what you wanted when I got here. Now, what is it? Nothing much. I just want you to straighten up and fly right. <laughs> Did you see that crowd downstairs? Oh, yeah, with the fire engines and everything. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, well, we're having civil defense exercises, and our principal was supposed to jump off this roof. But he backed out, and I backed in. <laughs> now, I'm willing to give you $25 to substitute for me and take a flying leap at the net. Lady, you can take a flying leap at the moon. I got acrophobia. I'm scared of high places. <laughs> what? But every night you jump 50 feet into a flaming tank. Correction. It's the little woman who jumps. You see, in our act, my wife and I both dress in the same kind of hobo costume. You see, so nobody knows the difference. Nothing bothers that little lady, but me, I couldn't look over Jeff Chandler's shoulders without getting to bed. <laughs> what a revolting development this is. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. It's just part of my nature to flee from danger. Let's get with it, Miss Brooks. The crowd is waiting. The firemen have the net ready, and you're... you're is this jump going to be co-educational? <laughs> Mr. Conklin, meet Mr. Phelan. You saw him at the circus. I do. Mr. Phelan of the flying Phelans? Yeah, well, oh. only one of them flies. The other one flees. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I decided not to make the leap. Not to make? Are you serious? Cross my heart and hope to live. <laughs> oh, now stop acting like a jittery schoolgirl. Yeah, but nothing can happen to you if you land in the net. You stay out of this. No, I won't do it, sir. I can't do it. But, Miss Brooks, I'm depending on you to make our civil defense show a big smash. Ooh! <laughs> well, now you know very well if it wasn't for this bad foot, I'd do it in a minute. Uh, Mr. Conklin, the mayor's becoming impatient. The mayor? The ma oh, Boynton, you've got to reason with this woman. Maybe she'll jump for you. Not even if you dangle him from the ledge as bait. <laughs> Sir, I wouldn't force Miss Brooks to jump if she... Uh, say, do I smell smoke? Smoke? Hey! Here! Oh, yeah! It's coming right through there! The stairs must be smoking! They wouldn't dare! <laughs> they know my rules again... The stairs? <clears throat> Great Scott! That means... Hot dog, the school's on fire! <laughs> Run for your lives, everybody. The whole joint's cooking. But I can't believe it. My school on fire. And now keep your heads, everybody. Let's pretend it's a fire drill. No panic now. No panic. Single file, close formation. Me first. We will march down that staircase. What <laughs> staircase is practically burned down. The only escape is to jump off the roof and into the net. Jump? Roof? Net? No panic now. Single file, everybody faints. Me first. <laughs> I mean, I'll jump first. Hold it, Miss Brooks. I promised those kiddies I'd jump today, and I am a man of my word. <clears throat> Listen to that crowd. No, it's me, your principal, Osgood Conklin. I'll be right down. The wind is blowing from the north, sir. You better aim a little south of the net. Uh, farewell, 
everybody. <laughs> You'll have to wait. I've got a show to do tonight. <laughs> conclusively. You know, what's that? Men are always braver than women as soon as they get panicky enough. 